Hi everyone. Um, this is going to be my explanation for round 728 1B tree array. So this is 2D slash 1B. Now, um, this problem is honestly on the trickier side in my opinion, especially for 1B level. So um, if you're not familiar with some of the concepts that I'm about to explain, then I'll link the concepts that I used in the description. So you can learn those concepts first and then come back to this video once you're ready. Um, actually, I think I should just mention the concept right now um, that I used in here. So because of the tree problem, obviously you want to be familiar with BFS, DFS. If you don't know what like these mean, then definitely look that up first before you even attempt this problem. Um, you also want to use, you also want to be familiar with, um, I guess, con like expect, I guess expected value. Yeah, expected value, and more specifically, you want to um, be familiar with contribution of expected value. Well, contribution to the expected value. And this also has like another way to, and I think some people refer to this as linearity of expectation. Um, if you don't know what I mean by expected value, then I'll put some tutorials in the description so that you can look it up by yourself. Because if you don't know what expected value is, then I highly doubt you'll be able to understand what I'm about to go over. So yeah, with that disclaimer out of the way, let's just get right into the explanation of this problem. So there's a few important things that you have to realize about this problem. We know that um, when we generate an inversion, we care about the node IDs of every, we care about like, the the node um labels so for example if i just take this sample input where i have one two three five four and six and i draw edges like this this is a second sample by the way then we want to think of it like this i'll just simulate the process really quickly so that you understand um how the problem works. So you first choose a random node in here where any, every node has a one six chance of being chosen. Let's just say we choose, for example, node two. So if we mark node two, then this is the first number that we write down in this tentative array. So we write down two. And so now we care about um, all nodes that are adjacent to this node two. In this case, there's one, three, and five. And then we choose one, three, or five with equal probability, where each node has a one-third chance of being chosen. Let's just say next um, we choose node five. So we have two and then five, and then five is marked. And so now we want to consider all nodes that are adjacent to a marked node. In this case, it's only three and one. So in this case, three and one have a 50% chance of being chosen each. Let's just go with node one next. And so node one is marked like this. And so now we want to consider all nodes that are adjacent to a marked vertex, in which case it happens to be all the remaining unmarked nodes, three, four, and six. So we can just choose these remaining three nodes with like in any random order with equal probability of the order being chosen. So for example, I can just say four, three, six, four, three, six. So this is one possible array that we've generated by this process. So if we took this pop, this array, let's count how many inversions exist in this array. So you look at this index over here, um, there's zero numbers that are greater than it to the left. So we move on. We look at one over here, two and five are strictly greater than one, two, and there are two to the left of it. So we increase number of inversions by two. I guess this is, this is the inversion count of this array and it's currently two. We go into four. There's one number to the left of it that's strictly greater than four, and that's node five. So we increase this by one. So it now becomes three. We go into node three. There's two numbers strictly greater than it, five and four. So we increase the number of inversions we have by two. And then six, there's zero numbers to the left of it that are strictly greater than six. So this particular array will have five inversions in it. So basically what we want to do is we want to consider out of all possible um, 
choices, or I guess choices of like as in the process that we just made. Because keep in mind, this is a completely random process where any node out of all the possible nodes that we have, we want to choose each node at a uniform, like equal probability. We want to know the expected value of the number of inversions that this final array will have. So this problem seems very intimidating at first because one, it uses expected value, and two, it's expected value of inversions on a tree. And that that's like a lot of that's a lot to take in. So this is where um, we want to kind of break the problem down. So here's how I solved the problem um, during testing. So here's what you want to think about. Rather than um, considering every possible um, like choice of moves in the tree and like finding out like each array and then like calculating probability that that array happens and then like counting how many inversions are in that array, that's just basically impossible to do. Instead, what you want to think about is for every possible inversion, what is the probability that our process will give that inversion? So what I mean by this is like, it's the following. So I'm going to draw a simpler tree over here. Um, this is not, I'm, I'm going to use the third sample because it's pretty, it's a pretty simple tree where we just have node one, uh, node two, node three, node four, and node five. And the tree looks something like this. So rather than like just simulating a process entirely, Let's think of, let's pick any two nodes. For example, we pick node two and node three. So node two and node three. And we want to count how many um, possible like processes exist such that an inversion is created between these two nodes. Now, to quickly clarify, an inversion between these two nodes will happen only when the larger of these values happens before the smaller of the values. So. Let's just assign um, a, to e a equal to three and b equal to two in this case, because this is the current inversion like pair that we care about. And an inversion will only happen in this pair when a happens before b. It's like a happens before b. So we know that um, because, um, this is the only time in this inversion will ever contrib this inversion will ever be contributed to our answer. We can think of a problem like this. Keep in mind that n is only at most two hundred, so this implies an n cubed algorithm. So, if we think of it, if we think of um, how many total inversions, or like how many pairs there are, there's at most um, n times n minus one over two pairs that we care about which is roughly n squared pairs that we care about. So if we can um, check all n squared pairs and find the probability that this pair contributes an inversion in O of n time, then we solve the problem. Okay, so this is great. We've um, reduced the problem to essentially given this pair, what is the probability that node A comes before node B in this array that we're creating from the tree? And this is much easier to think about. So I'm going to do this. If we consider the current pair of a equals three and b equals two, let's redraw the tree like this. Let's imagine a line where, okay, I'm actually going to erase this tree really quickly, and we can redraw it like this. Let's imagine um, node a, which is equal to three, is the left endpoint of a line and node B, which is in this case two, is the right endpoint of a line. So this is the left endpoint, this is the right endpoint. And so we know that this like line will essentially be the path from node A to node B. And there's only one path from node A to node B because it's a tree. And one property of a tree is that there's exactly one distinct path from between any two pair of nodes. So um, in this case, our path will look like this. We go from node three to node one, and then we go from node one to node two. And then all the other nodes 
like essentially stick out of some nodes in this path. So in this case, node 5 is adjacent to node 2, um, and node 1 is adjacent to node 4. So why is it easier to think of a problem like this? Well, here's why. We know that every single node belongs to exactly one group, where we define a group as the subtree that is rooted at this line over here. So in this case, um, the line itself consists of three node 3, node 1, and node 2. And the subtrees of each line node, in this case, if the root is 3, then it's just 3 by itself. If the current, if we consider the node, the node number 1, then this is a subtree that's rooted at because it's size 2, it has 1 and 4. And then node 2, it has subtree size 2 because we have 2 and 5. So why is this easier to think about? Well, this is easier to think about because um, like of this. Let's just assume that we just had a straight line. Like we didn't have any of these like extra nodes sticking out. So in this case, we just had like three lines in a road like this. And so if you had like a tree a size three, and then we just have a line like this. Doesn't really matter. This is node A and this is node B. And our goal is for node A to go before, is for node A to be reached before node B. So each of these nodes have, in this case, a one-third chance of being chosen. If we have if we choose node A, then we obviously take node A before node B. So there's a one-third chance that this happens. And then if we take this middle node over here, then we're essentially left with a 50% chance of choosing either node A or node B. So there's a one-third chance that we choose this middle node, and then after that, there's one-half chance that we choose node A before node B. And then if we choose node B, then obviously we haven't chosen node A yet, so we can never choose A before B if we choose B as a first node. So if we're given this line, the probability that um, A and B creates an inversion is going to be equal to, um, I believe it's equal to one half. Yeah. So in this particular case, there is exactly a one half, one half chance, one over two chance that node A creates an inversion with node B. So why is this helpful, you ask? Well, I don't know if you asked that or not, maybe you did, but, I'm but I am about to explain why that is useful. And here, Let's assume we choose a node one. We only care about node three and node two. We don't really care about node four and node five because even if we were to choose like node one and we choose like node four, this doesn't create any progress towards either node A or node B. We can only create progress. And by progress, I mean we can only get, we can only mark a node closer to node A or node B if we mark a node that's on this line. So what this means is that if we mark with node one, then we essentially have one half chance that we reach um, node A this is before node B, right? If we like choose one. However, keep in mind that four is in the subtree of one, meaning that if the first node that we pick is four, then we're eventually going to mark this node one, which is on the line. And because one at this point will be the only node that's marked on the line, we essentially solve the same problem as if node four or five never existed in the first place. So in this case, um, there's a two out of five chance that we pick either node one or node four first. And then out of that two out of five chance, there's a one half chance that we pick node A before node B. So it's two out of five times um, one half. And so this is like this middle component that we consider. Now let's consider this component over here where it's a subtree, which is literally just a single node of three. There is a one out of five chance that we choose this node first and if we choose this node first, we're guaranteed to pick A before B. So there's a one out of five chance that we choose node three. And if we choose node three, then we're guaranteed to have A go before B. And then over here, we look at this subtree, two over five. Um, there is a like node two and node five. There is a two fifth chance that we choose either one of these two nodes. And if we choose either one of these two nodes, we, we know for a fact that node B will go before node A. In other words, that if we choose um, one of these two nodes, then we have no chance of taking node A before node B. So essentially, 2 out of 5 times 0. 
So if we add all this together, this is one fifth, one fifth, this is equal to two fifth. So for this particular tree, we know that there is a two fifth chance that um, node A will be choose chosen before node B. And thus, this is a probability that this pair of three and two, where A is equal to three and B is equal to two, will contribute an inversion to our answer. So that's great and all, but now we have to solve another problem. And this is like an even simpler problem. And this is the last reduction that we have to make. We know that it's really, it's really easy to um, figure out what the probability of like choosing a node in some component is because we can essentially just generate this line and then you can use like either a DFS or you can use like a union find to find the size of each of these components inside of a line. And that's either way that's going to be O of n to create this line and find the size of these components. But now we have the problem of how do we actually find the probability that we reach some node A before some node B? So let's think of a problem now like this. If the first node that we chose was on the line, then obviously we can just like solve the problem on the line. If the node that we chose was not initially on the line, then it's eventually going to hit a marked node that's on the line, and then we can just solve the problem on that line that's, that initial node is rooted at. So let's just assume we have this line over here. Um, in this case, let's just say there's node A and node B. We want to know what is the probability that we hit node A before node B. And so we can rephrase, so we can phrase a quantity we want like this. We let, okay, let me actually rewrite it like this. I'll define what I want over here. I'll let x be equal to the distance we currently are from A. And I'll let y be equal to the distance that we want, that we, that we currently are from B. And so I'll define p at x and y as the probability that we hit node A before node B. And so um, this seems like a complicated formula to compute, but we can actually do it with dp. And here's how we do it. The base case is this. Um, for, okay, obviously, um, it's never possible for x and y to both equal to zero because then that would imply that um, a and b are the same node and I, and the same node can never create and a node can never create an inversion with itself. So we don't worry about that case. But we have two types of base cases. If we have prop p zero and y where y is strictly greater than zero, then the probability that we hit node a before node b is just equal to one because we're already because we're already at node A and we haven't hit node B before node A, so we're guaranteed to have um, arrived at node A before node B. Likewise, if we want to know the probability of x and zero, where x is strictly greater than zero, then because we've already hit node B and we haven't hit node A yet, there's a zero percent chance that we could hit node A before node B. So these are the two base cases that we have. So how do we compute all x and y um, using these base cases? Well, we can define a, um, a dp state like this. Um, how should I? Actually, I'm going to write it over here. So we assume that the minimum of x and y is strictly greater than zero. Um, and then the dp state will look something like this. We have p at x and y will be equal to um, 1 half times p at x minus 1, uh, no, 1 half, hold on, 1 half times p at x minus 1 and y plus 1 half of p x and y minus 1. And so we can either, so we can compute this dp um, recursively or iteratively, however you want, it doesn't really matter. And because the distance from between any two nodes is at most 200, 
this dp is, um, we have n squared dp states, and this dp should run in O of n squared. So this is like a dynamic programming that we can use to pre-compute all values of p of x and y. And then in turn, we can use um, these values of p and x and y to solve our original problem. Because, just as a reminder, um, let me just erase everything a little for now. If we look at, if we look back to our original problem, let's just say um, we currently we're currently looking at node A and node B over here. Um, our tree looks something like that. Our line looks something like this, and then we attach nodes like here, 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 here. Like it doesn't really matter. Um, we know that, for example, if we happen to choose a node in this subtree over here then we have, we have to take the probability that we hit a node in the subtree, which is like a size of this component over n, and we multiply it by p at 1 and 1, 2, 3. Because if we choose a node in this component, we're going to hit the case where, where, where this node is marked, meaning that it's a distance 1 away from node A and distance of 3 away from node B. So the probability that this inversion is created is, the prop, is p at 1 and 3. And this is a value that we've pre-computed before using the dp that we just mentioned. And so this is why we use that um, dp state over here. So I'll just quickly like label everything over here. This corresponds to p and 4. Um, this corresponds to 1 and 3. This corresponds to 2 and 2. This corresponds to p at 3 and 1. And this component over here corresponds to um, 4 and 0. So yeah, this is basically the entire solution. Um, pretty much what you're doing is that you want to isolate every like possible inversion that can happen like in any array that you generate, and you want to figure out what is the probability that that inversion is created in any like random process that you create in the tree. And you do that by first looking at the line and like finding the size of each component of like um, every subtree rooted at a node in the line, and then you want to multiply it by um, the probability that you reach node A before node B based on the distance from this line node from A and the distance of a line node from B. And we can pre-compute these probability um, values using a dp, which is n squared. So the final complexity will look something like we first need to do an n squared dp to like pre-compute all these values of p, and then we um, loop over all pairs of a and b, which is roughly n squared. And then for each pair, we take O of n time to do like this df to do to do the BFS to generate the line and like the size of these components. And we also and it also takes O of n time to find like the contribution of this inversion to our answer. So it's n squared times n. And so this turns into O of n cubed complexity. And that's it. That was a very um, that was a very long <laughs> explanation. Um, I wish it was shorter, but at the same time, this problem is also like it involves multiple steps to solve, so it was kind of hard to kind of explain everything thoroughly in a short amount of time. So if you have any questions whatsoever, leave them down in the comments below, and I will try my absolute best to get to them. Peace. That was so long, oh my god.